What's up drama divas? Welcome back to Christine Does Drama. So today I will be reviewing the latest episode of Scandal and we have so much to discuss so let's just get straight into it. So we it. see Jake in this kind of dodgy neighbourhood and we see this car that he's about to drive and we see oil leaking from it and Jake is always one step ahead. He presses the lock on his key and the car explodes and so we know that that has definitely got something to do with Papa Pope and then he goes over to Olivia to dinner and she receives this call and the call is from the president's daughter Karen. And it turns out she's at this party and she's got completely drunk and Olivia has to bail her out. And she calls Quinn to help her and Quinn doesn't understand why that this party and why they're helping this kind of rich kid. And then, you know, Olivia tells her this is the president's daughter. And so they arrange a helicopter and on the helicopter rides, Olivia's giving her a read. She's like, what are you doing? Why are you getting drunk at this party? She kind of, um, she slipped the secret service that um, protect her so that she can go to this party and just rave it up. It then turns out she gets her text on her phone and on this text is a sex tape of her having sex with two guys or as in the episode it said she was being Eiffel Towered. Um, yeah, you can Google that one yourself. And so <laughs> Olivia is livid. She sees the tape and she says, this is the dirtiest thing I've ever seen. And so she rings Cyrus up, who by the way, um, we see him in the bed with, um, you know, the sex worker who's also working for Portia de Rossi's character. And so we see um, him in bed with him, basically telling him that he's having the time of his life with him. And so Olivia rings him and says, you better get the person out of bed because I've seen the dirtiest sex tape ever and we need to handle this. Karen persuades Olivia to take her to the White House and there she meets an angry Fitz. And Fitz, it's just, it's so funny. He is just absolutely livid. And so he goes to Karen and, and he tells her, look, if you've been raped, I'm going to be here for you. We can catch the guys who did it. And Karen is just like, so I got drunk. I slipped past Secret Service. I went to a party and you think that I didn't ask to have sex with the two guys? And Fitz looks like he's ready to like <laughs> strangle her. And Olivia steps in. And so um, she, she goes away and Karen goes away to get tested and things. And um, Fitz asks Olivia, look, please, like, I need you to help me here. I need you to find out who these guys are and, you know, handle it like you always do. And so, of course, Olivia cannot say no to Fitz and um, that's what she does. And um, so what happens is Huck and Quinn come to the White House as well to help find out because the Karen cannot remember who she slept with, this president's daughter. So they have to they have to help her find out, find out and remember who it is. So then Abby sees Huck and Quinn in the White House and she's a bit baffled. She's like, why are you here? This is my territory now. And so Cyrus um, is also there and he, he kind of sees what's going on and he says, look, look, Abby, um, you know, I think you're a bit jealous of Olivia. I think you should just mind your own business and let Olivia handle what she has to handle. And you see, Abby, I'm just really upset about this whole thing because I really want Abby to get back into the gladiators. I know it will happen eventually, but I'm not a very patient person. and I really I really want them to reconnect. So anyway, Huck, Huck. Quinn, Olivia and Karen, they all they all put um, pictures of, of who was at the party on the wall. It's also, uh, I should also say as well that at the party, Huck being the most intelligent guy, I love Huck, he managed, manages to stop everyone's cell phone so no one can actually take photos of Karen as she leaves the party or at the party. She, he just stops all the cell phones in the place, which I swear I would love to have. Imagine all your embarrassing moments at clubs and stuff. Wouldn't you love, like... <laughs> If everyone's phone was just off so you wouldn't have the embarrassment of waking up the next morning and seeing a picture all over Facebook. Anyway, <laughs> so Huck, uh, so Huck um, manages to do that but obviously someone has actually taken a picture of her at some point and taken that video. So they're all trying to rifle through and they find one picture of a guy that she does recognise that she has slept with. So we see Tom, the Secret Service agent who ended up killing uh, the president's son and Papa Pope's together in the park and they end up having a kind of heated discussion and the t discussion is centred around the whole thing with Jake and the exploding car and um, that was obviously a ploy to kill Jake and it didn't work because, you know, Jake is so clever and intelligent and that's what Tom is trying to explain to Papa Pope that, you know, this guy, he helped train me so he's very clever and he knows what's going on. Her Papa Pope says, look, you know, I want Jake dead and I cannot be responsible for the consequences if that doesn't happen. You've got to do it. So he ends up going off and we see Jake in the, you know, in the background, obviously watching what's going on, goes after Tom and sits down next to him and says, look, you've got to trust me. You've got to leave Papa Pope and you've got to just get on the right side, my side. And um, Tom's not having any of it, you know, and who can blame him? Papa Pope is a very, very dangerous man. And he says, look, I'm scared. You know, what's going to happen to me? I, you know, 
I, I, I can't just not follow instructions. And Jake says, look, you, you probably, you could not trust him, but you can trust me, you know? That's really basically simple. You might not, you might be wary of me, but you know you can't trust Papa Pope. So cut back to the White House. They're still trying to figure out how they're going to help Karen and how they're going to not have this sex tape of her go viral. And then um, Fitz and Olivia have a moment together alone and he asks her, where did you go? You know, you went away for two months, so where did you go? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I... And my heart, when them two are together, I just can't, I can't control myself. So um, she says that, you know, she just had to take some time, time alone. And um, he asked her, who did you go with? And she says that she goes alone. She went alone. And we all know she didn't go alone. She went with Jake. And I'm like, you lied to him. <laughs> and, um, you know, at this point, they both think that the mother, you know, Olivia's mother had something to do with um, the president's son's death. And we all know that, that was, that's not true. And so she kind of says, you know, the, you know, my mother ruined our relationship. She ruined what we had. Then it cuts to um, David Rosen and Jake. Jake wants all the files back that he gave about the, you know, the secret service that, you know, B613. He wants all that stuff back. And it turns out that David Rosen has grown, grown some balls and he's like, no, that could destroy the government. It can destroy everything. So Jake has to give him a read and he grabs him by the throat and says, hey, I'm the boss here, you better give me back those files. <laughs> and um, of course David Rosen, he can't really argue with that and he gives them to Jake and... So I love that Olivia's stalking the halls of the White House again. She's on her phone, she's trying to handle this whole Karen situation. And as she's walking on the phone, she's talking to Jake, she ends up seeing Melly, and Melly's like, oh my God, why are you here? Why are you in my house? And I just find it so weird that she can call the White House her home because there's just so many people running around and everything. And so uh, Melly um, chases Olivia and says, you know, what are you doing here? And she says, look, I think you need to talk to Fitz about this. And she says, no, you need to tell me. And so she ends up finding out about Karen and her having sex at this party. And Fitz just gives her one of the biggest reads ever because she says, because Melly says to Fitz, like, I'm the mother. You know, I don't think Olivia should be here. And um, Fitz says, you know, I didn't ring Olivia, Karen rang Olivia. And your attitude has been just absolutely despicable over the last couple of, of, of weeks you've just not cared you know he, he, he said that he's dealt with smelly melly he's dealt with i don't care melly um i'll eat everything around me melly oh it was so hilarious and you you need to kind of get a grip and you know i'm dealing with the loss of our son as well but i've got to run the country but melly melly's not having it she's not having this you know olivia in her house and she's not having fit speak to her like the way he spoke to her I am absolutely loving Quinn this season. She is so badass. So she gets this guy who has slept with Karen, the president's daughter, and um, he, she gets him by the throat and she says, look, I will ruin you. I'll ruin your whole life. You better give me the name of who, the other guy who slept with Karen. Give me all the information. Give me the tapes. Give me everything. And so um, it ends up that um, the parents of the guy that Karen slept with are very, very disgusting people. <laughs> And they want money for um, the sex tape and they want 2.5 million for it. So Olivia goes to the White House and she goes to Fitz and says like, you know, what can you do? Um, I think you should pay them. And so Fitz and Olivia have this incredible heated moment. I just love Tony Goldwyn because he is such a handsome guy, but I've seen him in a lot of films. I saw him in the Warren Jeffs movie not too long ago where he played that kind of sex cult guy. And I'm, I can, I will tell you, I was not attracted to him at all in that. <laughs> he just was not, you know, it's still his face. It's still him acting, but I just wasn't feeling him. And just how you can just turn it up in all his parts. If you watch him in Ghost, you'll hate him. But if you watch him in, in Scandal, you just want to like be with him. And he just gave Olivia those smoldering looks and he said you know that he wanted to be with her and that you know did you miss me and she and she he grabbed her and he kissed her and he said did you miss me and she's like yes yes i missed you <laughs> and they kissed and she told that then she kind of had to break away and she because of jake and she told him that i did not go away by myself i did go away with jake and oh he was not happy with that and he says he said that he's failing as a husband as a father and as a man <laughs> and i was like oh fits and then I really like that that kind of touch when um, Olivia goes then to comfort him and then he grabs her hand and she's like, ow. And it's almost like him, the way he squeezed her hand was almost like the pain that he was feeling inside. 
And then he's like, okay, you know what? I'll do what my father always, father used to always do. I'll just pay off this guy and we can leave it at that. So this is why I love Olivia Pope and this is why I love Scandal. So the parents of the guy who slept with Karen, the president's daughter, get their $2.5 million. So, so you'd think that they'd be happy about that, right? No, they want more money. And so Olivia's like, okay. She takes a picture of them, takes a picture of the check and she says, I will ruin you. I will make sure that people know that you blackmailed the president's daughter and that you convinced your son to have sex with her so that you can get money. I will ruin everything for you. I'll ruin your family's life, your life. And <laughs> she makes them sign this, this agreement to make sure that they never ever mention her daughter, um, President Fitz's daughter ever again. And just the way she did it, so classy, just so, because in my mind, I was thinking, Fitz is gonna have to pay them, there's no other way. But Olivia, being the way that she is, she says, there's no other person better than me. I can make your lives a living hell. And boy, <laughs> boy did I think, I was just like, <laughs> I was just clapping in my head when I was watching it. I was thinking, go Olivia. So the most beautiful scene in this episode was definitely between Melly and her daughter. I just thought the way that she spoke to her in such frank terms was just just really just well written. So Melly um, goes, in, goes to see Karen and she says, you know, it's as much as it pains me, if you did this and you had sex with these guys because you really want to and you really were turned on, I would have to bite my tongue and kind of accept it. But I don't think that's the reason why you did it. I think the reason why you did it is because you're in pain and you miss your brother and you just want an out and just to feel something. And she also explains, you know, the whole thing about men versus women. And, you know, if you were a man and you did this, people would have just been high-fiving you. But you're a woman and in this society, it's different for us. And you know, she just, she just really was, was there for her and you just saw the kind of person Melly is, you know, she's a good woman, yes, yeah, she does shady kind of things, but you know, she loves her children and, you know, she was there for her daughter and I thought it was a very, just a very beautiful and well written scene and I thought the girl who played um, the daughter, um, Karen, was really good in this episode. So it wouldn't be scandal if we didn't have a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end. And we saw that because of what happened with Karen and that she managed to sneak past the secret agents, that um, they're looking more into the, the agents and, you know, their schedules. And um, they look into Tom's schedule and they see that his movements around the time of Fitz's son's death is a bit questionable. And so Tom rings up Jake and is like, oh my God, they're looking into my schedule. If they find out that where I was, they'll know that I, you know, had access to the, you know, the meningitis that ended up killing um, this president's son. So Jake is like, look, you know, calm down. You're telling the truth. Just tell them that it's Rowan Papapo that he has something to do with um, this whole incident, um, the whole tragic tragedy of, you know, Fitz's son dying. And he's like, no, I can't do that. You know, it's, it's going to be too hard to go up against Papa Pope. He's too powerful. But Jake's like, no, I'll be there. Just, just hold on. Um, and he goes to the White House. He gathers all his evidence. And, you know, he goes to speak to the president, but the president doesn't want to hear it. So the president ends up um, calling Papa Pope which is just a whole kind of mind-boggling, like, why is he calling Papa Pope? And Papa Pope ends up interviewing Tom and uh, asks him, you know, you know, where were you? Did you have anything to do with uh, the president's son's death? And we all know that Papa Pope is the one who instigated the whole thing. So we're like, what's going on? Why is Papa Pope interviewing, um, interviewing Tom? Uh, but if you remember at the end of last season, Papa Pope and um, Fitz had kind of a truce. So that's probably why he ended up calling him to help him out in the situation that he was a bit confused about. So what ends up happening is that um, Papa Pope ends up in interrogating Tom saying, did you kill the president's son? What did you have to do with it? And he says, who was behind it? Who gave the command? And he says, that it was Jake. And I'm like, no, he didn't. No, he didn't put Jake in the frame. So what ends up happening is Jake ends up getting arrested and that is the end of the episode. And Papa Pope ends up unscathed again, which is just so annoying. So guys, we've come to the end of this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you love Scandal and make sure you comment because I love talking about Scandal. And just let me know your thoughts on this episode. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you next week, Drama Divas. Bye.